The Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time is a third-person action-adventure puzzle platformer that was developed and published by Ubisoft and released on the PS2, Xbox and GameCube in November of 2003. The game was a reboot of the 2D action platformer The Prince of Persia, originally released in 1989 on the Apple II computer. This game's story begins with our protagonist, simply known as The Prince, and his father journeying to India to visit the Sultan of Azad. Along their journey, the visor, or vizier, I'm not sure how you pronounce that one, of the local Maharaja tempts the king and his army into storming the local palace with promise of great treasure. Your Majesty, I trust you will remember your promise. The Maharaja's treasure vaults lie within. During this battle, the prince comes across an artifact known as the Dagger of Time and decides to take it as a trophy. Meanwhile, the king and his army, under the influence of... I mean, I could say the visor or vizier again, but he's Jafar, isn't he? He's, he's just Jafar. Anyway, they also take a giant glowing hourglass, known as the Sands of Time, as a gift for the Sultan of Azad. Soon after presenting this gift to the Sultan, it is discovered that Jafar has orchestrated all of this in attempts to get his hands on the artifacts and tricks the prince into releasing the Sands of Time, which basically turns everybody into sand monsters. From here, the game follows the prince as he explores the Palace of Azad, dodging its tricks and traps as he discovers exactly what happened and battles his way to undo all of the damage he has caused. The gameplay for the most part is one of two activities, hacking and slashing your way through a variety of sand creatures, or navigating your way through the palace in its more quiet puzzle platformer moments. I have to say that both aspects of the game are not only done well, but blended together perfectly, and the game has a fantastic pacing to it all. Although I played this game when it was originally released back in 2003, I was surprised by just how modern everything feels. The combat is initially quite simple, as you start with just an attack, block and dodge, however, the game very quickly layers on a number of mechanics to slowly ease you into its fighting style. Within an hour or so, you'll be vaulting over enemies, performing acrobatic attacks off of walls, parrying, and then, when the power of the Dagger of Time is introduced, it brings an entirely new dimension to the combat that allows you to not only perform more moves, but add slightly more strategy to your attacks. The Dagger of Time gives the Prince the power to manipulate time. This means that he can stop, slow and rewind time. If you're surrounded by enemies and need some crowd control, freeze one of them with the dagger. If you need more time to plan your attacks, slow time down. If you swung your sword and you probably should have blocked, just rewind time and correct your mistake. It is a lot of fun to use the power of the dagger while taking down enemies, but even without it, the combat still works really well. There are many elements to its fighting style that feel like a predecessor to the combat later seen in Assassin's Creed and even the Batman Arkham series. The same can also be applied to its platforming, as the prince can perform a variety of acrobatic moves to traverse through each area. He can climb up beams, he can swing on poles, and he can even run up and across walls. Ubisoft clearly put everything they had into this game, and its pioneering mechanics make that very clear. Puzzles are lightly sprinkled throughout the game, and seem to have just the right amount of challenge to them, so you're not stuck in the same place for too long, and avoiding the deadly traps within the palace force you to get the full use out of the Prince's abilities and the time manipulation mechanics. The Prince of Persia also has a great art style, which it doesn't aim for photorealistic looking characters. This means that the game's visuals have aged quite well and don't stand out like a sore form against more modern titles. The palace that you progress through has a really nice look to it and takes full advantage of its Persian setting. The design of the sand creatures are creative and the effects used to show off the Dagger of Time's capabilities really do add to the game's presentation. As you can tell from this review, I don't really have many negative things to say about this game, and the negative things I do have feel like nitpicking. For example, choose not to be careful by blocking in combat, and you can easily end up on the floor surrounded with no real escape. The game's camera can sometimes be too cinematic for its own good, but for the most part it's fine, and the voice acting is sort of average, but it was a video game released in 2003. 
the same words. From now on, I trust no one but myself. All of these things are points against the Prince of Persia, but they don't really change how I feel about the game overall. At the time, this game introduced many mechanics that would be used and expanded upon throughout the industry and even feature in big budget games today. Revisiting this game today doesn't present the same learning curve that comes with playing most older titles, and most of all, this isn't a great game for something that was released in 2003. It holds up incredibly well, and is quite simply just a great game full stop. Due to its quality and impact on the industry, I feel almost obligated to give it 5 stars. But 5 stars does not mean that I'm saying Prince of Persia The Sands of Time is a perfect game. However, I am saying that if you own a system that can play this game, it should 100% be part of your collection.